Alrighty. Okay, so it's Saturday morning. I got a 2018 Honda Pilot, 163,000 kilometers, and that's what it's due on the dash, and it's almost 3,000 kilometers past due. Uh, so roughly 100,000 miles. This is uh, a sub four. We're doing a timing belt. Uh, we're gonna inspect the water pump, do a valve adjustment, uh, replace the spark plugs, and we're also doing a B service. Uh, one thing I noticed is uh, when I was driving it, it's making a clunking noise down here. I don't know if you can catch that with the uh, with my camera here. It's pretty loud when I was driving. Shut the car off so there's no power steering. Oh, that's that's the steering wheel lock. Hold on. There, no power steering. Still pretty loud. And uh, that noise, that noise is this U-joint down here for the steering shaft, which is in in there. So there's there's play there's play in the joint for that steering shaft. So I also put I'll just also recommend uh, replacing that as well. Okay. So how I told I can tell that it's uh, it's the steering shaft is when I stick my finger in between the joints and then I do the same thing side to side, the noise goes away. So typical steering shaft. Uh, and what else did I find? The the spray nozzle is is broken and it's spraying spraying that way. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what else I find on my inspection. <laughs> Let me show you. It's like this one's leaking here and then this one's spraying here. Yeah. They just they just they just kind of like they just break like right there. Look at that, I just made a video yesterday on uh, a, a noise because of these gas struts. When they leak all the air out, they make a thumping noise. Uh, but this one's completely leaked out. So all the gas is gone, now all the liquid's out. And uh, we got a leaking leaking strut on this side. Just this side. It's always this side for some reason. Okay, Ga gas pressurized, made in Mexico. So also needs a strut. And you can't forget the uh, lower control arm bushing that's always broken on this side for some reason. But if you go onto the other side, this side's well. It's 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 not it's 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 still uh, still good, but you can start seeing it's starting to crack. Well, that's not leaking. That's just uh, I don't know leftover residue and it, all the dirt stuck to it. Oh, there's that leaking strut again. When it's completely leaked down all the way down here, you know it's leaking. Uh, looks like the tensioner is leaking since I'm doing a timing belt. It's, what's dumb is when they quote out the timing belt job, it doesn't include that tensioner. And there's a, you can see it might, that tensioner is kind of, no, that's not, that's not oil. That's, that's dry. Yeah. But yeah, they don't, the advisor never quote out the tensioner. They just te quote out the belt. Uh, but you know it's it's dumb because every time you do the tensioner, it's always leaking or seeping out out of the uh, the pin or the pin tool or whatever you call it. Okay, so now that the uh, service is done, uh, we're gonna start on the uh, timing belt, which this is what the video is all about, <laughs> not the service. Uh, but the f first thing I like to do is I like to disconnect the battery, and the reason for that is I like to remove this uh, harness away from this fuse box so I can get access to see everything. Uh, you don't have to remove the PCM because uh, you can access the, the, the bolts that are hiding right right there and uh, underneath this part right right here where my finger is under the PCM with the socket just fine so you don't have to remove the PCM. Uh, other than that, uh, we just gotta take the belt off, remove the crank pulley, remove this engine mount, and then we can see the entire timing belt. Uh, once we get to that point, I'll bring you guys back, and then, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so, you know how I, so my, I don't know if you watched my last video, I don't even know if it's out, because I couldn't finish that video, because the customer declined it, but, you know how the strut's leaking and it's making a, a, a thumping noise? Same, same, same one on this one. This one's a, what year? Yeah, he, yeah, it's leaking. Yours is also leaking? Yeah, this, this one's was, worse than what you saw yesterday. Oh yeah, mine was just like barely thumping, but this one's also leaking. Oh, move your flashlight. But this one's also kind of, this one's starting to leak too. 
Oh, my light's not on. So I guess the, 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 the shock is very common for it to, to, to leak and start making noise, like a thumping noise. It's, yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> like I, hey, oh, oh yeah, check check the lower control arm because that bushing is always broken too. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll give it a once over. Yeah. So yeah, I just want just, just, to just show you how common that, sh that strut and the lower control arm uh, bushing always breaks are very common. That thing only has what, how, 90? 90,000. 90,000 kilometers. Just, just over 90,000 kilometers. I think that's like 60,000 60, miles almost. Okay, so one thing I want to show you so you guys don't make this mistake. So on the crank, I'm going to zoom in here. There looks like an arrow right there, right? That is not the arrow for your crank mark. Your arrow is actually back here, which looks like... Um, okay, let's see. So don't be lining up that mark with that mark on the front, because that's the wrong mark. If you're trying to put it up at top dead center. So, let's see if I can get it. Yeah, so it's the one in the back where I see, you see the two dots on the crank pulley. That That is the arrow you want to use, not the one in the front. Just wanted to show you, but other than that, I have lined up the two cam sprockets with the mark on the, uh, see right there? It, it, it's, it's dead on there. I'm just on an angle with my phone. And then uh, I'm gonna flip the phone around, I'll show you the other side. And then on this side, That's your mark for the other side. Okay, and the belt itself is a pretty simple routing. So it just, uh, I can't get far enough to show you. So it just goes around underneath the AC compressor, over the alternator, around the tensioner. So it's a pretty uh, simple routing. You can't, you can't, you literally can't forget it. And then to get that one bolt behind the timing cover, that one over there, you got to remove this tensioner. It's just a 14 and a 10 millimeter bolt that holds this tensioner in. And uh, yeah, just to get access to that one bolt up there. So yeah, this thing just comes right out. There should be a, the little 10 mil on the bottom is what locates the tensioner. And then this one just bolts it to the block. Or not the block, the, the bracket behind it that bolts to the block. Okay, it's coming. Yeah, that should be it. That comes off and there, it reveals your timing belt. It's uh, you can already see that tensioner. Make sure you t change that tensioner because it always leaks. You can see, right? The Honda fixed, uh, fixed pricing does not include that tensioner, so or you know I, I can't remember the invoice pricing or whatever so like all the all the pricing for all the services throughout the dealerships are all the same but that price does not include that tensioner so make sure you get one of those they they always leak but it's nice now they bolt it on the outside they bolt it on the outside of the timing cover instead of inside the timing cover like they used to where you have to take the timing cover off to, to change it all right so with all the covers removed, you just got to remove this cover that covers up the water pump, uh, which is also the bracket for your engine mount, this guy. Um, one thing I want to let you know is if you're removing these bolts, be careful because they are going to be tight coming out all the way. Uh, and you can potentially pull out threads. Uh, our apprentice over there, he's doing a timing belt on a, on a uh, Odyssey over there. His pulled out threads and he had to re-chase re the threads and uh, yeah, find find a find a new bolt for it. So be careful, or be prepared to be uh, tapping or drilling, tapping, and then uh, helicoiling coiling for uh, for a new bolt. So that's the only thing that you got to be worried about. So here is the belt. Doesn't look too bad. Probably uh, go a little longer, but I've seen people who declined. The timing about 165,000 kilometers 
and then I go to 260,000 kilometers and that's when uh, the belt goes. I think we still have a lot, the one on a lot, it's an Odyssey, it's sitting there for a while because the, the belt actually broke on that one because that customer didn't, uh, didn't do his timing belt and I think that thing has like 200 and almost 200, yeah, almost 260,000 kilometers and uh, the belt broke. But it's been sitting in our lot for like two, three months now because the customer hasn't, <laughs> I literally, I, I, we literally think he just ditched, ditched his car here and just like, like left, you know, <laughs> doesn't, doesn't answer, doesn't, doesn't, we can't get an answer what he wants to do with it. It's just sitting on our lot. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's, that's the timing belt. And then this is the leaking, leaking guy. You always want to replace this. I, I, I can't stress how much you, uh, you know, if you're going to do a timing belt and do all that work and not change a, change a tensioner, it kind of defeats the purpose of doing the timing belt. So now what you want to do is, you know, check your water pump, make sure they're not leaking, right? You can go underneath, see if it's coming out of the weep hole, but it's not leaking. Uh, check all your pulleys, right? Make sure they spin freely, no noise, no roughness. But in my opinion, these pulleys, they, uh, they can go, they can go a second, second timing belt before you replace them. Like usually we place it on a second timing belt. So three, 320,000 kilometers or 300,000 kilometers, whichever, uh, when they want to do it, but haven't really had them. We actually didn't have a, we haven't had to replace a water pump for it because it was leaking. Usually we were already in there for a timing belt when we replace it, but usually on the first timing belt doesn't really need a water pump so yeah other than that I'm gonna stick on the stick on the new tying belt there's a couple ways uh, you can do it uh, what I used to do as like when I was an apprentice doing timing belts I would before I take the belt on I marked the, the the sprockets with a like nail polish on the on the belt and on the sprocket so you know you know where it goes and then you go to the new timing belt you mark the same thing and you put it exactly the same spot but now you know when you do it so often it's just uh you're, you're used to it so you just slip on the belt you make sure you put all the tension on this side i i typically put every uh, i i turn the crank slightly backwards and then when i have the belt on i turn it back to the timing mark that's on the crank and usually it takes up all the slack on the belt then i put the tensioner back on so there's a couple ways you can do it you can do it the way where it's guaranteed it's going to go back in the same spot or you uh you're used to doing these and you're just doing it that way or you know just free free handing it this is a bad angle but before i pull the grenade pin i'm gonna turn the crank back to its mark just slightly to take up the rest of the slack in the belt before i pull that grenade pin so there it's just, it's very slight but it helps in uh, slipping the belt on so now that's all lined up I'm gonna go double check my other timing marks on the top and then uh, yeah I can pull out that grenade pin up there so yeah now this side is nice and tight where this side is still kind of floppy so that's what you want you want this side to be taking up all the slack and then all your slacks on the tensioner side we're, uh, Oh, anyways, uh, pull the grenade pin, right? The last final check, what you want to do is rotate the crank twice around, make sure all the marks all line up, and then we can slap everything back together, and then we're going to do the uh, spark plug and valve adjustment, also replacing the uh, valve cover gasket. So, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to... I'll, I'll do this without the camera. Okay, so after rotating it twice around, bottom's all lined up, and then... Uh, there is that mark, and then okay. So the final thing before you uh, put the crank pulley back on, right? There's this plate. Oh, let me turn on the light. So you have this plate. It's it's tapered on one side, right? As you can see, right? It's tapered. Uh, it, it should only go uh, this way, right? The non-tapered or the tapered side facing the, uh, the the block. Because if you put it this way, you put it in there, this this lip 
or this taper is gonna shred the belt. So you make sure you put it in the correct way. As you can see, right? Put it backwards. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna shred the belt. Okay, so I uh, took off the intake manifold. Uh, intake manifold is not that difficult to remove. You just gotta loosen the three three bolts that hold the PCM in the front to uh, to clear this stupid plastic cover that uh, that goes over the intake manifold slightly uh, to completely lift it out. But I just want to show you this is a good time if you're doing if you have the uh, intake manifold out to do your sub symbol four valve adjustment and spark plugs. Uh, it's a good time to clean your throttle plate. And uh, I don't know how well I was going to show you what the intake valves look like at 100,000 miles. So I'm going to show you what it looks like at 100,000 miles. Uh, maybe if I had a camera. That's what it looks like. I don't yeah. Zoom in will make it look better. I mean, yeah, I've, I've seen worse. But too bad the, uh, the MM4s don't include like a, uh, you know, intake valve cleaning service, you know, because Hondas are all going to GDI or direct injection and stuff. Um, surprised they don't have a service for something like this at like 100,000 100, miles or 165. Uh, but yeah, so that's what they look like. They don't usually typically cause an issue with misfire, but we haven't had to deal with it. We, we, we tend to do more injectors for, you know, rich running or misfiring from injectors than carboned up intake valves. Okay, so I removed the valve cover. Just want to show you how clean it looks like inside, right? With 100,000 miles, right? Looks pretty good, right? So I'm going to do my valve adjustments on this side, change the spark plugs, put the valve cover back on, go over to the other side, take the valve cover off, and then do my valve adjustment over there. I like to do the uh, easier side first and do the hard side because, you know, I don't know. That's how I work, I guess. Um, but yeah. So let me uh, look up the specs for uh, the, the valves and uh, yeah, and then I'll get my appropriate feeler gauges. Okay, so I got my two feeler gauges. These are the two that I need. Uh, I like doing the timing belt first before I do the valve adjustment because, well, not because, but <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to need to use this little window for the timing cover because it has a line there and then there's a cylinder number and then there's also a, a mark on the bottom of the timing cover that indicates, you know, top dead center for that cylinder. So right now, cylinder one is top dead center. <clears throat> so I got to rotate it because I only have this side of the valve cover off. So I needed to turn it until it shows uh, four, five, and six. I believe the uh, firing order would be uh, one, four, two, five, three, six would be the firing order. So after one, it's going to be cylinder four. And then after cylinder four, it's going to be cylinder two. And then, you know, so on. it's going to be firing across from, uh, or the next one coming up would be across from each other. So that's how the firing order is. Uh, but if you're, you know, naming cylinder numbers, it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> Uh, typically, when you're rotating it, uh, you can see it from this angle when you're turning the crank over. So that's how I see where that line is. Yeah. Easier, easier to see by person than I can see through the, through the camera. Okay, so we're on cylinder 5. I just want to show you when I do, when you check it. Not, not all valves are going to need adjustment. That's why it's called in it. That's why they say inspect and adjust if required. But something like this is is pretty loose, and I typically just uh, see how much the feeler gauges move, and there's a gap there. So that one I would I would adjust. So I just gotta pop that down or pop the uh, 10 mil off, and then screw this thing in and then feel the drag and then usually I don't feel that that bit of play with the feeler gauge in it same thing with this side too not as not as much on this side but it does uh, move so I'll adjust both of these intake valves here 
Okay, so I just want to show you after uh, adjusting it. So it goes in, there's a bit of drag, right? And then the amount of movement in there, very minor. You can see it kind of move, but not, not much. Same thing with this side. There's, there's some drag, but very little movement. Oh, yeah, like har hardly any. Okay, so once you finish your valve adjustment, I already put the spark plugs in. Uh, make sure you clean the surface, right? Uh, you want to put silicone on this corner, right? And then there's a, and then the corner down there to, to prevent from uh, leaking. But you gotta scrape off all the old old silicone from before. So once I put the valve cover back on, I'm gonna move over to that side. Okay, so for you who are wondering how I get this valve cover in and out. So how I got it out is uh, you actually have a buddy to hold the harness up slightly and then I you know break the seal so that the gaskets comes off the thing uh, but I, I put the valve cover down this way underneath this this harness and uh, it, it makes it easier to uh, get past these spark plug tubes. So when you go down this way your valve cover can fully come past this harness and you can just pull the valve cover out this way. Uh, that's how I uh, get it out. Uh, if you want to get it in, same thing. Uh, when you put your valve cover down here and then you slip it underneath the harness, uh, you can stick your head with a light underneath here, right? And you can actually see if your valve cover gasket is okay and it's still in place before you uh, commit and put your valve cover uh, down onto the cylinder head. So just my uh, quick quick little tip for you if you're uh, trying to remove or install the, the front bank uh, valve cover. Okay, so with the back valve cover, uh, I already removed the bolts here. Uh, the back one, everything back there, you're basically just doing everything by feel. But this is the, uh, I guess I would consider the easier, easier valve cover to remove, unlike the previous aluminum ones with the harness and everything. Uh, what you got to do with the harness is there's there's two bolts that hold the harness onto the valve cover. You got to remove that um, And then uh, you got to unhook the two oxygen Sensor connector off the bracket Down there if you can know you can't see it, but there's two connectors that are clipped in and clipped into it But there's still a bit of the harness still connected, but that's gonna give you enough enough space to get this valve cover out so just, uh, just so you know if you're gonna be doing this yourself. And there you go. Also, this side looks pretty clean as well. So, now I got the valve cover. It's, it's, you can just change the spark plugs now. Um, actually, this, this side is probably easier to do a valve adjustment than this side. Because the, the exhaust valves are right up against this thing. And you got you gotta use a uh, what do you call it? You use a pocket screwdriver, a 10 millimeter combination wrench. Uh, is that side? Oh uh, yeah, I think that side might fit the tool. We'll see when we get there. What I needed to remove is, or you know, take off the bracket was these oxygen sensor uh, wires, and that gives you enough uh, enough give to lift it high enough. Here's what I mean when you don't need to, not all valves need adjustment. Uh, like say for instance this one. It is literally perfect. No movement. It's not tight, it's not too loose. Same with this one. Barely any movement in it, so I would consider that's like perfect. How about the exhaust? down to the exhaust side um, I can use my my phone as a mirror to see where I'm at so usually I'd be using a mirror at this point but see same thing oh wait actually this one might be kind of loose let's see no it's actually pretty good no movement but Hey, let me turn on my my light. <laughs> there we go. 
feels so much better. If this uh, connector would be out of the way, I can see. I think I'm in. How's it? Yeah, I'm in. So this one might be a little loose. Let's see. Let me feel it. Oh, my hand's in the way. How, how am I going to do this without covering, covering it? But I don't feel much play in it though, so... Here. See if you can see the feeler gauge move. There you go. See? No movement in the feeler gauge. And I hardly feel any play in it. So that one's good. So cylinder one is actually perfect. I don't have to do anything. Okay, so everything's put back together. We're close to the end of the day. Uh, we're gonna go and uh, start the car. <laughs> Oh, by the way, customer declined everything I recommended, not even the, the steering shaft and strut, spray nozzles. What else did I recommend? I can't remember. It's been, <laughs> it's been a long day just doing one car. Okay, there you go. Everything is just shaking because now the gauges all work because the battery got disconnected. Okay, so everything's running good. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Um, if you guys, are planning to attempt the sub symbol four for your Honda Pilot? Uh, I mean, you can give it a try, uh, but be warned: your your neck, your back, and your knees. Just trying to do the valve adjustment and all that. Uh, you're you're gonna be in for a treat because they're all gonna hurt, especially the next morning. <laughs> so, yeah. So this job actually takes me the entire day. Uh, not because I'm slow, but just because. I gotta constantly keep taking breaks because my knees hurt, my back hurts, my neck hurts. We, we, ain't, we ain't built like what we uh, used to be when we're younger, but when we get older, everything starts hurting. And then, uh, you know, as you, uh, as you get older and you're a mechanic, things hurt even more. <laughs> so, yeah. But the timing belt itself, I, I, would, I would say, uh, you know, give that a try. You know, it's, uh, it's not, not that bad uh, if you're just changing the timing belt. Uh, just make sure you change that tensioner and then make sure you check your water pump the pulleys and everything's all nice and smooth Those things uh, they, they usually last quite a long time even after the second second timing belt change So not nothing to worry about when uh, with with those uh, But anyways also. Oh, yeah one more thing. I also want to thank one person. I'll put his uh, put the put the I guess a screenshot of somebody gave me five bucks so I, I want to thank that person just personally in this video for uh, giving me five bucks on that uh, on uh, or for g giving it to me. I told I told all my coworkers like, oh my god, somebody gave me five bucks, and then they were like, you look so happy getting five bucks come <laughs> rather than getting uh, <laughs> making money at work. <laughs> so yeah, I just wanted to mention that. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, please give me a thumbs up, comment down below. Check out my uh, Amazon affiliate store if you uh, want to go browse browse around. Uh, also, I get a, a bit of commission on that. But other than that, I thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.